All right, so here is floor, which floor is it? Floor seven of Tower of Abyss season five. Uh, my, mag my buff today is magic attack plus 30. Uh, so I was going to go with um, Aragon, Aragon and then Ollie. My strategy was going to be, uh, well, he's just there to take a hit or two just in case. And then uh, Aragon was going to just smash with uh, his uh, skill. But uh, since my buff is magic attack, I'm thinking maybe I'll put Jacko in the back. Yeah, I think that that should be okay. In which case, I don't really need Ally. So what I'll do is, hello? Yeah, there we go, okay. Yeah, a little bit of lag there. So Ally is really slow, which is why I was gonna do the same. I'm trying to go for like, slow heroes on this floor. So yeah, if you had like, critical and plus lethal or something like that, or basically anything other than a magic attack buff, I would just use like, Aragon in the back and like Alley in the front maybe or something like that if your Aragon was a little bit weaker but since I've got a magic attack buff I'm going to take advantage of uh, the fact that I've got a three target hero with magic boost and as a bonus she has magic attack 50 and uh, Aragon has this and yeah I might be overthinking this but I always like to be sort of better safe than sorry and also if anybody who's watching this has like weaker heroes or something like that it's uh, never good I mean it's never bad never bad to um, uh, be a little bit too prepared, you know, like, better to go with overkill than, uh, find out that you, uh, well, weren't fully prepared. So, let's see, uh, conditions for today are place one normal hero on the team, and I believe that Aragon and, uh, Ali both satisfy that requirement. Uh, actually, you know, I probably don't even need, I don't, I really don't need this guy, because, um, uh, the reason why I was bringing some kind of... I was bringing Ally as like a shield, basically, because Aragon doesn't have any damage immunity or shield or anything, and so if I... Unless if you actually look at like the actual amount of damage these guys are going to do and calculate it out, then I prefer to just have some kind of shielding. But Jacko has built-in void shields, so she's all good. Oh yeah, and so I'm going to show my stats on these guys. So there's crit... So she's got... Critical, critical, uh, max HP, block and critical damage, and critical rate, critical rate, criti uh, block rate, and block and damage. So, yeah. If it was, and again, uh, so if you don't have a Jacko, then uh, I would just use probably Aragon in the back, particularly if you had any buff other than magic attack, but since I've got magic attack, I'm just gonna go with that. Anyway, so yeah, here I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, uh, oh, did I not show my masteries? Oh, well, whatever. Eight seconds. Alright, and yeah, this video is a little bit rushed because I'm kind of... I'm doing this as like an afterthought on my way to school because I'm realizing I'm not going to have time to do this video later. But, uh, yeah, so... Let's see. So, Mark Pinja is at the top, number one spot. Uh, my time right now is 2.36. Top time is 2.05. Oh, that would, so 2.36, that would put me about like between 47 and 45. Well, I'd be 45 to 48, somewhere in there. All right. And, uh, so next, tomorrow's floor is Cocoon. He's got physical type damage and critical rate. Uh, he's got boost critical rate. Oh, there are like three cocoons, okay. Oh, and a raccoon. Taunts all enemies for two turns. Increases defense by 60% for two turns. And clear it, place one normal hero on the team. So I guess they're trying to burn through our normal heroes here. Oh, my masteries right now are just the same as they usually are, like that. Um, so let's actually take a look and see. Uh, the ruby clear reward on this floor, the next one on floor 8, is uh, 10 rubies. 9 is 10, 10 is 10, 11 is 10, 12 is 10, 13 is 10, 14 is 10, 15 is 10, 
16's 10, 17, 8, oh, 